some practice tips and pointers regarding determining assets because what you can do to pay. Does your client have the information? And this is going to be the biggest key and the biggest help. If your client has canceled checks, viable addresses, a social security number, employment information, other sources of information, it's going to be a lot easier for you to collect on. And if they don't, is the case worthwhile enough to invest in an investigator, do a background or an asset search? All this costs money. And if it, again, if we get back down to a $1,000, $500, $1,000 case, you're probably not doing this. Um, I can almost guarantee you're not really doing this. Um, but the, you know, if you've got a five-figure, six-figure settlement uh, judgment that you're trying to collect on, this is something you really need to consider and hope your client either has the information or the wherewithal to actually pay for some of these things to be able to aid in your collection practice. So there are some things you can do on the cheap and quickly. Online research, social media, people post everything. And that works to your advantage because they'll post a lot of different things where they're living, where they're at, where they work, what they do. Um, Manta, White Pages, Switchboard, YellowPages.com, there are a bunch of searches that you can use to try to find out where people are. There are paid ones also, um, Accurant, Dellpoint, um, that you can engage, in, uh, get a subscription for, and they have more up-to-date stuff. Um, okay, so if you're determining assets and you're already post-judgment, you're already invested in the case. You may not realize at the time, but there may not be viable assets to collect after all. Um, but that not, isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you, you and your client agree, you're gonna get the judgment and let them sit there. Because if they're not viable assets, and you may have known that, you can get a judgment and hopefully they sell a real a piece of real property. Or you can try to garnish wages. Or Eventually, it'll come back to bite them because it'll have to be taken care of at some point. Um, my, every, every attorney has a style for collections, or, or for just every style, person has a style of litigation or being a lawyer. Mine's personable. Um, I always try to catch more flies with honey rather than vinegar. For me, it works. It's, I, I'm not the... I will come down with hail and brimstone and shock and awe, and I'm not like that. You screw me, I will. But that's not normally my style. I want the debtor to be open and willing to talk to me and willing to work with my client. Um, so, you know, without a law, filing without a lawsuit doesn't always happen, but there's some keys to it. If you have an open dialogue, you have the correct information. If you're telling them there's a $10,000 debt owing, and there is a $10,000 debt owing, that's great. If you tell them there's a $10,000 debt owing and there's only a $5,000 debt owing, and if it's a household debt, you're violating the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Um, you know, so half of this is based on, does your client have good information? And the other one is, um, are you relaying and reading the information correct? And I would always advise you, double and triple check with your clients. You know, and then the other considerations, can a debtor keep payment terms? Can the creditor be reasonable or is it the principal they're going after? And I always joke around, I tell my clients, if everybody were reasonable and everyone would pay their bills and I'd be out of work. <laughs> you know, you, you can go for 100 cents on the dollar. Sometimes clients want 150 cents on the dollar. That doesn't happen, you're not allowed to. <coughs> Um, so if you're filing, you know, if, you, if you're doing this based on a document, a contract, an invoice, some things you really should consider, uh, venue selection, where are you bringing loss, a lawsuit, personal guarantee, you want the individual behind a company responsible, penalties for non-compliance, clients ask me, can I go after my attorney's fees? I'm like, is it in the contract? No then no, you can't. You can't go after something that you are not entitled to.